It's impossible to imagine Canberra without either the National Gallery or the High Court buildings. Colin Madigan was the architect on both projects and he died on Saturday at the age of 90. Controversy surrounding his work continues. He was apparently never reconciled to the new entry at the gallery. He had hoped for a lakeside entrance to the building. Architect Penley Boyd worked with Madigan on both projects and Andrew Wilson was a junior architect on the High Court. They shared their unique perspectives with us. Architecture in Canberra through the 70s and the firm Edwards Madigan Torzillo Briggs became my mentors in my third year degree. So every Wednesday afternoon I was invited out to site to follow the then site architect around the High Court site. He was a very laid back person, very relaxed. Uh, until he could get his teeth into something. But as, as a person, he, he had no great airs and graces. I think he had a healthy ego, of course, as I think one needs to have to be a creative person. But um, so my early memories of, of him as being a, just a sort of a, a normal guy, very approachable. So I started working on uh, uh, Madigan projects, probably for uh, a few months when he decided he needed someone in the Canberra office. I uh, loved the idea of coming to Canberra, so I came here in 76 and became the site architect on the, on the gallery. Uh, Madigan worked on that building for 14 years. Uh, the competition was in 1968. Uh, then there was a documentation phase. Where the building construction started in 1973. The opening stone was opened by Whitlam. And construction was completed in 1982, and the building was opened by Malcolm Fraser. Together, the two buildings will complete what is known as the Parliamentary Triangle, incorporating the National Library, Parliament House and on the southeast shore of the lake, the High Court and National Gallery. We were working uh, every day flat out resolving matters that needed to be resolved. Cole, he was a very egalitarian person. He gave me and others a lot of responsibility at a very young age. He, I would say he was more like the coach of a, of a sporting team. Although we were sort of an intellectual sporting team, he was very demanding, as a coach would be, if somebody was letting the team down. He, I, I know he took some people aside and told them to get their priorities right. Like, are you going to be an architect or are you just going to be a, a playboy sort of thing? He began his theories with his earlier works and you can see relationships between the geometry of the High Court and the Art Gallery to his earlier works at DY Library and so on. Uh, so it's a development of learning and a development of knowledge. Silence, all stand. The grandeur of the size, space and the approach to them communicates in a subliminal way a respect for the law and the power of the law in this democracy. And Cole was very concerned about a democratic and consultative um, environment. Some of the participants uh, are no longer with us in the opening of the High Court, but I can tell you it was a mad frenzy. Sir Garfield Barg was uh, advised that, um, uh, that the building wasn't going to be finished for another nine months to a year, and he said, that can't be so. No, that, that's absolutely impossible. I've already invited the Queen to come and open it, and she's coming in six months. So. Uh, acceleration costs were paid and there were people working 24 hours a day on the, on the building to have it completed. So, and everything came good on the day. In times of social change and tensions in the world, great are the demands upon the courts and the challenges to them in reconciling competing interests and in accommodating traditional rules to new circumstances. So one of the really interesting things about these two buildings is that the gallery was going to be the prototype for the High Court, but the High Court ended up being finished ahead of the gallery and ended up being the prototype for some things on the gallery. But the main generator of the gallery, and I think the way it should be seen, is that I see it very much uh, as like a Gothic cathedral. There is a, there is a, a very strong underlying intellectual idea of the equilateral triangle. 
and the equilateral triangle was used so that the building didn't have right angled turns in it. So if one takes the triangle, you can see it everywhere. Cole's um, attitude was, if the gallery needs to expand, it should be a separate building. Just separate it out. Just, just uh, look, I don't know how much distance one would need, but a, a breezeway or some element so that the original 1982 building, which, let's face it, was designed in 1968, could stand alone as a, as a, uh, a work of, uh, of, of architectural integrity without being hacked into and, uh, and modified. Cole wanted the entry to the National Art Gallery to be from the lakeside because when you're approaching works of art you need to be in a peaceful frame of mind and that he thought deeply that people to establish that peaceful frame of mind would best approach the building by walking along the water's edge of the lake and through landscape and then into the building and that is the essence of his dispute about the new location of the entry facing the street. To the public, perhaps the High Court and the National Art Gallery are the prominent, prominent examples of his work. But really for us as architects, it's, it's that language of design from you know, the early 50s all the way through to the mid to late 80s that is the prominent achievement of his work. Uh, and the design thinking behind. There's similarities in the depth of thought in the uh, geometric composition of both of them, in the palette of materials used in both of them, in the pursuit of excellence in craftsmanship, uh, and you know we'd all acknowledge that um, the craftsmanship in that concrete work. I think those, both those buildings are uh, a true indication of um, the pride that the country had in building buildings and in its commitment to Canberra back in uh, the, uh, the 70s and the early 80s. And unfortunately that commitment has, has waned. Well, it might sound a strange thing. I probably won't even be aware that he has died. I mean, I think of Madigan a lot, and whenever you come up with a tough problem and you even slightly tempted to take the easy way out, I, I feel him looking over my shoulder. Don't wimp out on this one, Penley. Come on, you can do better than that. And um, that's how I'll always... He's, he's still here. Adam Shirley was the producer on that story. And Madigan's other works include buildings at the University of New South Wales, Macquarie University, and a range of projects in the Sydney Northern Beaches suburb of Warringah. There'll be a memorial for him at the Great Hall at Sydney University on Monday.